last three chapters of this playlist has covered JSON fundamentals in Snowflake, including variant data types, colon notations to extract JSON element, loading JSON data using SnowSQL CLI as well as from S3 buckets. This chapter, chapter 4 in this playlist will focus on working with JSON files as an external table and discuss the advantages of external table objects, DDL statement, other parameter to enable the partition and auto refresh feature in the context of JSON files. Many a times we are so focused on JSON data loading and forget that there are many ways to query the JSON files without even loading them into a snowflake tables. So we will briefly discuss about external stage and external table DDLs, how to query external table that has JSON files, what is the auto refresh feature and how to enable the partition in the external table if we have a huge amount of JSON files available under different folder structure. We will also see the query profile for each of these keys. We will discuss can an external table be created for internal stages and also compare the performance of internal stages against external stage queries. Welcome back to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and to this Handling JSON Data in Snowflake playlist for true data professionals like you. This is a complete playlist to cover JSON handling in Snowflake. Link for all the chapters can be found in the description section below or click above in the information icon. Let's start with chapter 4. Before we go for hands-on exercise, let's briefly discuss about the entire setup and the prerequisite to execute those SQL statements in your free trial or enterprise environment. I have JSON files already loaded in my S3 bucket and I am going to create an external stage which will link between my S3 bucket and my Snowflake instance. We have already covered this in chapter 2. Get the video link in the description section or above in the information icon. My external stage will also have a file format attached with it. So we can directly query the external stage as a table. So we will first query the external stage, understand the JSON data set, create an external table, understand the external table DDL structure and compare it with CSV external table structure and see what is the difference. For this demo, I am using cells and order data in JSON format. So let's quickly review our sample JSON file and also see how they are stored in the S3 location before we start with our snow site worksheet. Let's try to understand our cells and item JSON data file. So at the root, I have this cells element. This cells element has a collection of all the cells order and each order has multiple items. So if I have to access this first cells ID, then I have to use cells index 0 and under this cells, I have a orders and if I have to access orders, then I have to use a dot notation. Again, these orders are having multiple item. The first cell is having only one order. The second cell is having two order. So you can pause the screen and try to understand how this JSON file looks like. And on the left side of the pan, it shows JSON as a text. So you can see all the element here and this is my orders which is a collection and if I scroll down this is the second cell which has two orders. I have created total 365 JSON files for this demo and each day I am having multiple cells and each cells are having a multiple orders. Let's go to our S3 bucket and try to see how the data is stored there. So this is my S3 bucket and I can see a folder called cells. This cells folder contains all the JSON file by date. Let's open this. I can see I have a total 365 objects from 14th January 2022 till 14th January 2023. Okay. And if I click on this particular folder, it has only one JSON file and the structure of the JSON looks like this. Okay. In this video, I am not going to cover how to configure the S3 bucket and create an external stage. This has already been done in chapter 2 in detail including the S3 configuration, policy configuration and how to make your bucket public. So I would request you to go and watch this entire video to understand how the S3 bucket is configured in my Snow site web UI and this is a worksheet. So first let's create an external stage called JSON external stage. So my external stage got created successfully. Now list all the files within this external stage.
So I got the result. It has total 365 JSON files. And this is how they look like. Each of the JSON file represent a cell's data, which include multiple cells in a single day. And each cell has a multiple order items. So this is how all the data looks like. Good. Since our stage already has a JSON file format definition, we can simply run this select statement on the top of our external stage and fetch the result. Let's run this select star from the external stage. It's taking some time. So the query result exceeded our maximum size of 16 MB of the result data. This will limit the number of rows shown on the table. So query took 9.9 .9 seconds to fetch the record. And we will see how the query profile looks like. Since it is a JSON data, the entire JSON data is represented as a single column called $1. And that's why you see this is a $1. So instead of running select star from the external table, I can also execute select t dot dollar one and this t is an alias here. So let's run this SQL statement and see what does it bring. This also took almost same amount of time because fetching data from external stage needs more extra time. Let's click on the first row and it says it is too large to see the data. So these are the couple of limitations with our snow side, I don't think we have this limitation in legacy web UI. If your individual JSON is too big, snow side will have challenge displaying them on the screen. Okay. We already know how our JSON structure looks like. It is more easy for us to extract the individual element. Let's try to query this. So since I have a multiple cells in each individual JSON file, I have to access the first cell using zeroth index, and then I can use the dot notation and then I can use the individual element within my sales data. And let's say I have to access the quantity for each of the item, then I can again access the orders using the zeroth index and then give the name of the element. Let's give a limit and execute this query. Since it is a dummy data, most of the customer names and customer emails are exactly same. So this is how you can query your external stage and analyze your JSON data. Let's create an external table on the top of our external stage, try to analyze the JSON data. However, if you have not seen how to create external table for different kind of file format, I would request you to go and watch this particular chapter from my playlist. In that playlist, we have learned if you have a CSV file, CSV file is already a structured data in that we understand that it has a column and each of the column is delimited by a delimiter. So there we can access individual columns or a field with dollar notation where dollar one would represent the first column and dollar eight will represent the eighth column. Okay. And if you have to create an external table, there is an object called value object from the value object. We extract each of the column and by default, the name of the column is C1, C2, C3, C4, and then we do the typecast. So this is how we create an external table if we have to create it on the top of CSV file. However, when it is a JSON object or you have a JSON file, you cannot follow C1, C2, C3 structure. You have to convert the entire value into a variant data type and then that variant data type needs to be assigned to a column the way it is defined on the line number 85. Plus, we have to give the location of the external stage. The syntax looks like this. We have to use a keyword with followed by location and then specify name of the external stage. And then we have to give file format type JSON. Though the file format is associated with this particular stage. Now let's execute DDL. So my external table is created. What if I just comment this line and try to recreate the external table? Let's see what happens. So it is expecting a file format. So when we are creating an external table, the external table expect minimum the location as well as the file format. Now let's execute a select statement on this external table. So what we notice there is a value object associated with each of the external table. This value object is represented directly 
as a JSON underscore data column. Now we can run a copy command on the top of this external table and we can copy the data or we can use create a table as a select statement. Let's try that. So my cells underscore JSON underscore zero to create it. Let's run the count select query. So I have 365 rows, good. And let's see when I run this query, how fast does it fetch the result? It took no time because now this is part of our internal table and external stage table takes longer time compared to the internal snowflake tables. Now let's go to our query history tab and understand the query profile. So this is the query profile for my select statement where I am selecting the external stage. If you look into the table scan state, it has taken almost 90% of the processing time. There is total 365 partition out of 365 partition, 152 partition has been read. Rest of the steps has taken hardly any time. So whenever you query external tables, majority of the time is consumed by the table scan process. Once the data is available within the Snowflake compute, it takes hardly any time. This is one of the disadvantage having an external table. However, if you have to quickly analyze your JSON without loading data into a Snowflake table, then you can create an external table. Let's try to understand what happens in a query profile page when we try to create a table from a table which is an external table. This is two step process, not a one step process. So first step says create table. When I click on the second step, if you look into the step two, it actually scans the data from the external table and then it runs create table as a select statement. And again, if you notice 73.5% of the total time taken by this scan operation and the 25% time is taken by the create table as select because this particular process actually insert data. If you look into the statistics, all 365 partitions are read total byte which is scanned is 722 MB and if I try to go to this particular table let's see how much data does it store. So when I come to this cells JSON data which is an external table and the table detail looks like this okay file format is JSON cloud is AWS and here also it is showing external table here it does not show any data size because it is an external table. When I go to my cells underscore JSON underscore zero two let's see how does it look like here the entire 700 plus MB data is compressed into 139.2 MB data, right? And there are total 365 records and I can quickly see the data. So this is how my data looks like within my internal table, okay? There are another attribute which you can access while querying your external stage that is called file name as file row number. If you have a multiple JSON entries per JSON file, then it will also give you the file row number. However, in this case, we have one logical JSON data per JSON file. So it will always give you one and then we can use a parse JSON with $1 notation and we can give alias. So let's run this query and see what result does it bring. So if you look, these are my JSON files and this is the row number which is always one because we have one logical JSON structure within the JSON file followed by the actual JSON data. Okay. There is one important thing I would like to highlight which we are going to discuss in this part. When you query an external stage using dollar notation syntax, it always fetches all the files available within your external stage, whether inside a single file or under a multiple partition. However, when you are going to execute a select statement through an external table, any file added to the external stage location after creation of the external table, it does not consider those files. For that, external table definition provide an attribute called auto refresh, true or false. We have already covered this attribute in detail in this particular chapter. And if you want this refresh should happen automatically, you have to enable it through the notification services. In this example, this notification services is implemented through AWS SNS topic. Every time a new JSON file is added into the cells location, this notification will be triggered 
and Snowflake will refresh the external table metadata to consider that file. So this is the purpose of auto refresh and this notification attribute while creating the external table. And this is not specific to JSON. This is applicable for all other data type, be it CSV, Parquet, ORC, Avro, as well as XML. Next, we would like to see, can I create an external table with internal stages, which has JSON file, okay? So for that, I am going to create a file format called JSON file format. So my JSON file format is created successfully. I am going to create an internal stage called my internal stage and associating this file format with this internal stage. So I can query the internal stage. We have already seen in our previous chapter. So my internal stage is also created. Let's see whether I have any JSON file available in this location or not. I do not have any JSON file. Now I am going to run this put command, which will place all the JSON file from my local machine to this internal stage location. So I am in my SnowSQL CLI console. And let me quickly change the context. Now I'm going to put all the JSON file from my local machine to Snowflake. And this is how the command looks like, where I'm picking all the JSON file from my chapter four location and placing them into the internal stage. Auto compress equals to fall and parallel equals to 50. And again, if you do not understand how to use SnowSQL to load the data, I would request you to go and watch my data loading masterclass playlist. This may take a while because I have 360 file available in this location. So I will fast forward from here. Let's run the list command and see whether 360, four or five files have been loaded or not. So I can see total 364 files have been loaded and all the JSON file with date is available here, looks good. Now I am going to run a select statement on the top of this internal stage and it should work because my internal stage is already having a file format associated with it. So it is showing exactly the same type of result. It has got total 364 rows. However, it could not show the summary because it is a JSON data type and it is still calculating the statistics. Looks good. Now the purpose of this part is to create an external table on the top of internal stages. We managed to create external table on the external stage, but is it possible to create external table on internal stage? Let's run this DDL statement. I ended with warning saying that external table cannot use internal stage. It has to have an external stage. So if you have a JSON data in your internal stage, you can query it. However, you cannot create an external table on the internal stage, which has a JSON data. This is also applicable for other file type. Okay. So I can either run a copy command or I can run a create table as a select statement to load the JSON data from internal stage, and then I can follow the standard procedure for querying my JSON data, which we have already covered in our previous chapters. So this chapter has covered the working with JSON using external table and how to create external table file format and stages to make it happen, including the query performance. So if you are creating an external table on the top of JSON data or any type of data file, the query will perform poor. Yes. There are a lot of things which you must be curious how to work with JSON data, especially when it is a deep nested or having a complex dynamic structure. Oh. Next set of chapter in this playlist will answer those questions. So continue to watch this space and also explore my other playlist, which covers wide variety of topics. Thank you for watching and keep learning.